In this video, we're going to take a look at testing your GraphQL server. Um, we're using RSpec for this, and we're going to show you how to run queries and mutations against the schema. Um, also, how to assert things coming back from the GraphQL response. And lastly, we're going to show you how to extract the query and use variables so that we can write it in one place and dry up your tests. So the first thing I want to do is show you the fixtures. So these live under spec fixtures and we've created a fixture for accounts. So I've set up this test account um, with a password and our spec will automatically create that in the database and make sure it's there. And um, to do this, we set um, config global fixtures all inside the Rails helper um, just below this line here which is already set up so this tells reels to look for anything in the fixtures folder and to automatically load all of those okay so just before we start writing our tests i want to go to app controllers graphql controller and this is set up by the graphql ruby gem and we'll basically show you how it works so you can go in here and see this line that we have CoinFusion Schema and CoinFusion is just the name of this example app. Yours will be different. Um, but we see this execute function and the query gets passed in. We have other things here too, like variables and context, but we'll come back to that later. So that's how it works. Have a read through that and hopefully you'll understand. Um, so we go back to our login and we'll first off uh, start with this test first so that it returns a token. So I'm just gonna paste this in here and this syntax, if you haven't seen it, is a Ruby here doc and it basically allows you to do multi-line strings. Um, there's nothing too fancy going on. So the first thing I'm going to do here is change this over to the actual password for the user. And as you can see, we're just using this coinfusion schema.execute and we're passing in the query. So let's try that and let's just print out the result and see what happens. And as you can see, we get this GraphQL query result and it looks like it's some form of hash. So we get data, login, token, and that's working. So if we write expect result.dig data login and token and we can say something like to equal and then we run this it's going to fail because um, we're actually getting back this token but what we can do here is say not to be blank and that should be enough to pass. So now we can go on to the failure case and we'll copy across our logic. Only we'll change it to say the password is bad. And so really what we want here is that result data is going to be nil and that should pass. And then the last thing we want to do here is say expect result errors dot first and I think it's called message to equal and we'll just leave that as empty string and get the exact syntax. It also doubles up that we get to see the test fail. Um, so we see it's invalid email and password. We can then paste that in and now that passes. So if I run both tests, both of them are passing. So that's good. The next thing I want to look at is um, we've got a lot of duplication here with our GraphQL query. So I want to take this out and I want to make it a method. So we'll call it login query. And we can remove this variable. And now in GraphQL, you can name your mutations and queries and you can name it whatever you want, but 
I usually just copy what it's called. So I'm gonna say login. And then what we can do is we can create variables. So we can say dollar email, which is a string. And if we put an exclamation mark on the end, that means it's a required field, basically. So we can then do the same for password, which is a string that's required. And then in here, instead of typing in our email, we can say dollar email, and we can say dollar password and hit save. So that basically makes our login query reusable and adds variables to it. So we can now go back up here and we can say use login query. And then we can say, here's the variables. And if we just copy out email and password, and don't forget to add a comma, that should now work. And it does. And now we can copy the same thing across to our other test and we'll just change the password to bad and then get rid of this query. And let's run both of those and now they both work. So we want to take this cross to our register spec and let's start with the failure case here that um, it returns an error when validation fails. So if we paste this in, we can also then go define our register query down the bottom here. And let's just copy this across because I always forget this here dot syntax. And we can say mutation register, which is going to take a lot more options. So we're going to say account type, which in our case is a special type. I think it's account type type. Then we'll have an email, a password, a name, which is also required, and a date of birth, which is also a string and required. And then we can come in here and change this to register. We will pass in basically all of these parameters. So I'm just gonna copy these across and then put them all on new lines. And we will get rid of these dollars and add a comma at the end. And hopefully that is all correct. And then what do we want back? Let's say, let's take back name, email, and token. And now we can update our spec. So we have this, it returns an error when validation fails. So we can pass in um, our register query. And now we need to add all of these attributes here. So let's paste this in. And we'll say account type is individual, email is test at example.com, password we will leave as an empty string. That can be our field validation. We'll say name is test, and we'll say date of birth is 1990.01.01. And then if we go back to our login, we'll see this is how we can test for errors. So we can just copy this across and let's just run that. Now we get a failure and account type type isn't a defined input type. So now I need to look at this and see what it actually comes out as. So we can find this out by going to graphical, um, which you saw in the last video. We can then see our types down the side. We can go mutation, register, and account type is, oh, it's just account type. So we can copy that across and go back to our tests and paste this in. And if we rerun that test, we get a failure 
nullability mismatch on variable account type and argument account type. Oh, so I think that just means we need to add our exclamation mark in. And now if we get this, we just get register field, which is the error our app is outputting. And this is actually all we need. So if we paste this in and run, that should pass. And that's good. Now we can test um, a successful registration and let's just copy across all of this and what we need is password and we'll just give it a long password. Now we want to test that we get some data back so we can say expect result.dig and we can say data register and let's say email and we'll expect that that equals this then we can also say um, name and let's just leave that value and see the test field so we can see it is test and these tests are working And then the last one we want is that we have a token again. And we can copy that from the lap, from the first test and say expect it not to be blank. So let's run both of those. That's all working, which is great. And then finally we can go to our me spec. So our me spec sets information about the current logged in user and this is where we'll make use of the context for uh, GraphQL and we can actually pass in an account for that so our accounts here it's called test and we can use this in our spec by saying let account and we can then say accounts and then we put the name of the account as a symbol so we can say accounts test and if i just echo this out so you can see it's actually loading up the account from our fixture so what we want to do is go back here and we want to copy across this syntax and we can say query equals. And then the query is, uh, it's not gonna have any variables. So we just say query me. And we can take out all of that stuff and we can just ask for, let's say the ID, name and email back. And then we can write some assertions on that. So we can say expect result dot dig data me and then id and we can say expect that to equal account.id we can then say name and we'll just check here name is test account and then we can get email which is test at example.com And then we just need to execute our query. So if we go through and copy across this CoinFusion schema and we pass in our query. And if we run this, it should fail because we're not passing the current account. Oh, and we need to also assign it a variable. So this feels um, because data is not coming back. Now what we can do is say context and we can say current account and make that account. Now if we run this, I expect it to pass and we're still failing um, because IDs come back from GraphQL as a string. That's just a, something to do with the GraphQL schema. So if we stringify our account ID here and rerun this. 
it's now all passing. So this is how we pass in current account or anything else that's in your GraphQL context. Um, it's really handy because it saves you having to set authorization headers or cookies or anything like that. We can just pass in any objects for the context directly. Obviously in the GraphQL controller within the app, this context is set by looking up an account from the authorization header, um, but it's great in the tests, we can just pass in the account directly. So that's how we can run these tests. Um, if I now just run all of the GraphQL tests, RSpec Graph, spec GraphQL, um, there should be five um, and they're all passing. So I hope that was useful um, and let me know if there's any questions or anything else you want to know about testing GraphQL. Thanks.